Last weekend was so good and it was so amazing. So many people saying yes to Jesus and following him into the waters of baptism. Hey, you ever wonder, or you ever notice rather, how um, like, a, like a big event or a major milestone or, or even just a special goodbye, you ever, you ever notice how it brings out some pretty powerful emotions? A few years back, maybe more than a few years, but a few years back when uh, I joined the Army, the Army recruiter came over to my house one night. I was living with my parents at the time. Came over at night because I was shipping out the next morning, right? So he comes to pick me up that night, and uh, my parents... Uh, man, they were just like hugging on me that night, hugging on me. Like, and then my mom's like kissing on me, and my cheeks like, oh. And then, and then I thought it was over, right? And all of a sudden they're hugging me again. I'm like, what is going on? And they're saying weird things. Like, like we love you, Billy. We're going to miss you. We're going to write you letters. And, and, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like all of that. And then, and then the Army recruiter says, all right, come on now, son. And my dad's like, who you calling son? And then they start, no, just that was last part was... <laughs> That did not happen, but everything else did, okay? <laughs> Listen, all, but, but it's just, it wasn't normal. None of this was normal. Right? My, my parents were acting in a weird way. Now, now, why would they do that? It's because, it's a really simple answer, because they loved me. And it wasn't like they loved me then and they didn't love me before. It wasn't like they loved me for the first time or even in a new way. In fact, they had loved me my entire life. But because of the timing... And because of the significance of the situation, it was then and only then that I got to experience the full extent or the fullness of their love. As Christ followers, it's really important that we learn to love more and more. As Christ followers, it's really important that we learn to love more and more like Jesus. Because Jesus is not only our Savior, He's also our example of love. So this weekend, what we're going to do is we're going to see a picture of the real Last Supper, a little bit different than what you might have seen on TV a few weeks back, okay? But we're going to look into the room, and we're going to look into also God's heart, which is going to be really neat, as Jesus stoops down to wash some feet. Now, our time together, no doubt, it's going to be memorable. But my hope and my prayer for each one of us across all of Fox River, is that it would also be moving, right? And it would be motivational, and it would be meaningful, just like last weekend was. Did you know, like, over 20-some people signed up for baptisms on that day, last weekend? It was so amazing. I hope when God does a stirring of our hearts and, and a stirring in our spirits in the same way that we would choose to follow his example after our time together here right now, that hearts could be changed at the North Campus. I mean, they're already being changed, but but that God would do a mighty work that they would continue to be changed at the North Campus. That marriages and families and relationships, that they would be made better over at Muskego. And that souls, both young and old, that souls would be saved here at the South Campus and honestly all across Fox River, right? And and, and just specifically for our online family, like, because God is offering this, right, that you would enter into, maybe for the first time ever, just more of the fullness of the grace of God that he has for you today. Lord, have your way with us here at Fox River, those you love. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. It's a gift, and we say thank you. Thank you for all of our Fox River family members. God, thank you for our first-time guests. God, thank you for everyone who kind of falls somewhere in between. Um, Father, you've been good to us, and I know you have something special for each one of us today. Uh, Father, help us to hear from you. Help us to understand what you're trying to tell us. God, in these precious minutes you have for us to share together right now, God, I pray that we would see you and feel you and experience your love, God, that somehow, someway, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the grace afforded us from the cross 2,000 years ago, God, that we would choose to respond by following your example, God, in this prayer and above this prayer, we pray this most of all, that you, Lord Jesus, your name would be glorified in our hearts and in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, hey, let's turn to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And as you turn to John chapter 13 in your Bibles, like I have already, or your digital device of choice, As we get into John chapter 13, let's set the table. 
All right, here we go. Here's what's taking place. John 13. It's a Thursday night. And not just any Thursday night. This is the Thursday night right before Good Friday where Jesus Christ goes to the cross and is crucified. On that Thursday night, Jesus and some of his closest friends and followers, they're in an upper room. So there's some kind of house they're in, and this appears to be on the second story, right? They're in the upper room, and they are sharing a very special meal together, referred to as the Last Supper. But this is their last, last meal. This is their final meal together. So let's get into it. John chapter 13, verse number 1. Here we go. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Listen, this was a happy time of year, all right? This was a time of worship and joy where like a million or so people from all over Israel, they would come to Jerusalem. Now, Jesus had done this every year. He was 30-something years old at this time. He had come to Jerusalem every year of his life. So, and, and it's been a great time of worship and joy, but a time to celebrate, a time to remember when God rescued his people from Egypt out of slavery and into freedom by the Passover, right? So there's a celebration quality to it. But this time around, it was a bit different for Jesus. Maybe the others didn't quite grasp this. In fact, we can say with confidence they did not grasp this. But for Jesus, he knew his time was near. He knew it was time for him to die and return to the Father. Now up to this point, Jesus had been with his friends, some of them, for over three years. He was their leader. He was their Lord. But he was also their helper and their friend. But up to this point, and this is really significant, up to this point, they did not see him as servant. Now, if we don't see the people in our lives as servants, one thing's for sure, we're never going to really know how much they love us. Recently, I heard someone say, this, per this person is a wise person, by the way, and what they said is really wise. Here's, here's what I heard them say. If you see someone as hurt, you'll help them. If you see someone as broken, you'll fix them. But if you love someone, you'll serve them. The disciples, they knew that Jesus loved them. They just didn't understand how much. Now, Jesus wanted to help them out with that. He wanted them to see him not only as Savior, but also as servant. Let's keep reading. Verse number two. The evening meal, right? So they're eating this, this Passover meal together. The lamb, the bitter herbs, all they're eating this meal together. The evening meal was in progress. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. So the wheels are in motion already. Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and Jesus was returning to God. So Jesus got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he took some water and he poured it into a basin. And he knelt down and he began to wash the disciples' feet. And then he dried their feet with a clean towel. Huh. This was amazing. And this was not normal at all. <laughs> not normal at all. Normally, right, here, here's, here's what was normal, is the lowest ranking person in the room they would wash the feet of the others. Now, normally that was a slave, and not just any slave, it would be a non-Jewish slave. But normally that lowest person would do what Jesus was doing. Not the highest, <laughs> Jesus is the highest, right? This is totally not normal. Yet the king of creation, the one who made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that is in them, and then he did that all in six days, and on the seventh day, God rested. He's the one who gets up from the meal and begins to work. You see, 
God himself, God made flesh, the one who dwells or tabernacles among us, he's the one that gets down and begins to get to work, dirtying his towel with the grit and with the grime of men. Like a slave, he knew it was time to take up the towel. Can we say it together? Take up the towel. One more time. Take up the towel. Now, one thing we got to understand is this is no ordinary towel. This is the towel of love. Can we say that? Towel of love. You got to say the love. Okay, towel of love. There we go. This is the towel of love. Okay, good. We got it. This is the towel of love. And that's why he was doing it. Okay, because Jesus loved them. And when you love someone, here's what you do. You serve them. See, Jesus was proving his love. Jesus proves his love by serving. We have so many people in our lives that serve us and love us, don't we? And we, we can go a ways back, too. I mean, perhaps you're like me. At some point in your life, because you're young or because you're old, you've got someone changing your diapers, okay? So, all right, you got, you got somebody who at some point in your life has made sure that you had food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, right? They, they loved you and they served you in those ways. You've got somebody, maybe even right now, who serves you a hot meal or maybe packs your lunch as you head off to work, all right? That, that person loves you and they've served you. Many of us have some FBFs. I'm talking about faith-building friends, all right? Maybe they're in your small group. Maybe they're on your serve team, all right? But, but you've got some FBFs, man, just reaching out to you sometimes, seeing if you're okay, right? Everything all right? And if everything's not all right, they do what they can to help you, right? To get things to be in a better place. Think of all the wonderful people God has blessed us with in our lives. None of them have to serve us, but they choose to. Why? Because they love us. And because they love us, they take up the towel of love. There we go. Man, they're so good. God is so good to us in that. See, when someone serves you, they're proving, they're showing you that they love you. In fact, if you're with somebody now who loves you and serves you, just turn to them real quick, all right? This is for you too online, by the way. Turn to them real quick and just say, thank you for loving me. Thank you for serving me. I got nobody. I got, I <laughs> oh, man, you guys are awesome. I did not plan that. That was cool. I love you guys, too. Thank you for serving me. Thank you for loving me and serving me. All right, let's get back into it. Verse number six. Okay, here we go. Verse number six. So Jesus is washing the feet of everybody. And then he gets to Simon Peter. Watch this. Verse six. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Right, because Peter's like, man, you are, the, you are deaf. I don't know what's going on, but you are the highest ranking person in the room. There's no way you should be doing this. Peter's, Peter's noticing this, right? Jesus replies, you don't realize now what I'm doing, Peter, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You see, Jesus is trying to, trying to serve Peter because Jesus loves him, right? Peter's like, no, 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 no. And don't you love how sometimes when God tells us something for the first time, it doesn't quite register, right? But then he says it again in a way that we can understand. So what's happening right here, that, that's kind of what's happening. This is the Bill translation. But, but when Peter's like, no, Jesus is like, listen, if you don't let me wash your feet, we can't be friends. That, that's that, that's kind of what's happening. And Peter's like, Oh, okay, okay. And that's why we see his response in verse 9. Then Lord, you see him like 180, right? Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath, Peter, need only to wash their feet. Their whole body's clean. And you, Peter, are clean, though not every one of you is. For he knew, Jesus knew, who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. So let's just pause. What is Jesus talking about? He's talking about foot washing, He's talking about full body baths. I mean, like, this is literally, like Jesus is getting a little abstract. What, what is going on here? We have to understand, we have to realize something. 
that foot washing, yes, foot washing is actual serving, okay? And that's really important. We do not want to set that to the side. But there is something else going on here. Foot washing is more than just a demonstration of service, Jesus serving those he loves. Foot washing here represents forgiveness for believers. See, when someone hears the gospel, right, that Jesus died for our sins, and that three days later he rose for our life. When someone hears that and believes it, like, that's true. And then they trust in it. Like, Jesus, you died for my sins. So I don't have to do any work to make up for that. I'm trusting in what you did on the cross. Ah, So when a person hears the gospel, believes it, and then trusts in Jesus, here's what happens. At that moment, they are saved. They are made 100% clean. They are washed clean of all their sins, past, present, future, all of that. It's like they received a full body bath. Oh, okay. And at that moment, they become a child of God. And at that moment, their eternal destination is heaven, the very dwelling of God. And nothing can change that, nothing at all. It's by grace you have been saved, by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. However, as a believer, someone who's saved, someone who's received Jesus, who's been made fully clean, as that person continues to live their life, it doesn't go perfectly, does it? (laughs) Right? As they live their life, as they walk through life, their feet get a little dirty. They sin. Right? Anybody found that to be true? Any any Christians like, man, just, yeah, (laughs) I just can't stop this sinning thing. I really am looking forward to this stopping one day. And it will when we're in his presence and made perfect, right? But a person who's received Jesus and is walking through life, their feet get dirty with sin. They don't need a full body bath. They just need their feet washed. Why is that so important? Because whenever a believer sins, it affects their relationships. With others, yes, of course, but it affects their relationship with God, They need their feet washed. That relationship has been damaged and they need it to be repaired. They need it to be restored. Listen, they're still a child of God. They're still going to heaven, but that relationship, it needs to be fixed. Here's what God says in 1 John chapter 1, verse number nine. He says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Whenever we come to God and we say, I've sinned and I'm sorry, he takes up the towel of love, that's right, and he washes our feet and he makes us completely clean once again. In the years before I became a pastor, um, one of the jobs I had, I had many, but one of the jobs I had was I I worked for my father-in-law. And one of my responsibilities as his employee was to send in the property tax payments um, for his various business properties. So I remember one mid-April in particular. I remember sitting in my car. I remember what car it was. I remember what parking lot I was parked in. I remember the scenery outside the windshield and the side windows. I remember everything about it. Why do I remember all that? Because on that particular day in mid-April, something hit me. I forgot to send in the tax payments. Oh, no. So, like, my procrastination had finally caught up with me. And I was like, this is bad. This is really, I really, really screwed up. And it's going to cost my boss, my father-in-law, it's going to cost him a lot of money. And it's really going to mess up our relationship because I had sinned against him. A little bit unintentionally, but I had still sinned against him. I knew. Listen, I was still a son-in-law. That didn't threaten it. I knew he still loved me. That, that, was, that was true. But our relationship was really messed up at that moment. And I knew I needed his forgiveness And when I asked him for forgiveness, thank God, hallelujah, he forgave me. And our relationship was restored. Is there anyone that you've sinned against recently? Is there anyone that you've hurt recently that you need forgiveness from? Just think about that, okay? Is there anyone that that has hurt you, that's sinned against you, that you have the opportunity right now as the Holy Spirit leads you to follow Jesus' example? Is there anybody that you could extend forgiveness to? Is there anybody that you could wash their feet with the towel of love? When my father-in-law forgave me, it was amazing. 
and he was showing me that he loved me. Whenever God forgives one of his children, he is proving to them that, they, that he loves them. And Jesus is no different. Jesus proves his love by forgiving. Let's keep reading. Verse number 12. When Jesus had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes, uh, put on his clothes, and returned to his place. And he said to everybody, Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. But now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Let's say these next words together. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, let's say this, ready? You will be blessed if you do them. So Jesus, in these last verses we just read together, he's explaining what just happened. He's like, now you know a little bit more of how much I love you. As your teacher, I just showed you an example. But as your Lord, I am leading you to love. Follow me. Remind each other of how much I love you. All right, show one another, show the world even what the love of Jesus Christ is like, because they don't know. They don't know. Lower yourself and elevate the needs of those around you. Take up the towel of love. That's right. That's good teamwork. I'm loving it. And serve the people in your lives like Christ has served you. Lay down your pride. It's time to let go of your grudges and extend forgiveness within the church and extend forgiveness within your home. Forgive the people in your lives like Christ has forgiven you. Mm, it's powerful. And Jesus says, when you follow me, and when you follow my example, like when you choose to love, whether you serve him or forgive, when you choose to love, you will be blessed. Now the word blessed actually means happy. So you could think of it like this you will be happy. When you follow Jesus and his example, you choose to love, you will be happy. You will be blessed. I mean, think about it. Whenever you serve, it feels good. It feels good to help someone. It feels good to contribute to their success. Now, some people get real jazzed about it. Some people just mildly, like, okay, yeah, okay. But, but like, it feels good to help somebody. It feels good to be appreciated. Doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's like, ah, it feels good to hear the words, thank you. And it feels really good, this is even more rare, by the way, but it feels really good when, as you follow Jesus' example, the people pick up on that, and they follow your example, and they serve you back. I'll scratch your back. You want to scratch mine? It's like, yeah, I'll take it. Okay. So it's, it's, it's good. It feels really, really good. And not to mention, keep this in mind, this is, this is theologically just huge, okay? Keep in mind, we were literally made and saved and gifted by the Holy Spirit to serve one another. And it feels really good, if that's on our radar, it feels really good to walk in the ways that God created us. Like to do what we were made to do. Knowing that we're making a difference, but also knowing that we're literally putting a smile on Jesus' face. Kind of makes me happy just thinking about it. I don't know about you. But here's where it gets really exciting, okay? Really, really sad. So we just talked about loving people and, and the application was serving. Let's get back into loving people with the application of forgiving. Because whenever you choose to forgive people, yes, they're going to see you. They're going to notice that you forgave them. But here, here's, here's the beauty. Here's the nugget. They're going to see Jesus. Because that kind of love, that's like next level love. This is the rare type of love. When you love someone so much that you choose to forgive them, that is just, it's not common. People are not familiar. They don't know what, even what to do sometimes with a love like that. There are seven words, seven of them, that can return the joy to your marriage. There are seven words that can bring healing back to your home. 
there are seven words that have the potential and the power to repair and restore just about any relationship. And here's what those seven words are. Jesus has forgiven me. I forgive you. Can we say it together? Jesus has forgiven me. I forgive you. One more time. Jesus has forgiven me. I forgive you. Listen, there are relationships that are broken because of something that happened in the past. Sometimes, and we know this is true, it's, it's with me, it's in my family, it's with you, it's in your family. Like, this is not new territory. We, we know this to be true. But some relationships are broken and have been for a long time because something happened like way in the past. There are marriages on the brink of divorce because of the resentment and the bitterness that some of us are holding, all right? And maybe, maybe your marriage isn't on the brink of divorce, but, but there's many marriages that are just miserable right now, if, if, if we're being honest, okay? But they don't have to be. But one of the major reasons why our relationships and our marriages are so messed up is because we're not using these seven words. It's time to free yourself from the weight of unforgiveness. It's, it's time to help that other person to become freer from the guilt and the shame that they've been dealing with, probably in ways that, that aren't even on our radar. We're not able to perceive, but, but they're thinking about it all the time. They're carrying that around. Let's do what we can to free them as well, because here's how it's supposed to work. Easier said than done, by the way, but here's how it's supposed to work. Here's how the Holy Spirit is leading us. Watch this. Forgiven people Forgive people and give people life. Let's say that. Forgiven people forgive people and give people life. One more time. Forgiven people forgive people and give people life. My father-in-law did that for me. I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders because of the mistake I made, because I had sinned against him. And when he forgave me, he breathed new life into my spirit. He refreshed my soul. He reinvigorated my faith. It was so needed and so wonderful. May others see Jesus when we love them and when we serve them and when we forgive them. May others come closer to God with wherever they're at as we follow Jesus' example. If someone sins against you, it's not only an opportunity, it's time to take up the towel of love. Oh man, that was good, I love, it's so good. Loving, serving, forgiving. Hmm, very powerful things. Following Jesus makes a big difference. It makes a big difference in our hearts as we become more and more like Jesus. It makes a big difference in our homes as our friends and family members that they actually see what the love of Jesus is like, that they can, can like experience the gospel in a tangible way. Following Jesus and his example makes a really big difference in our church as well. That everybody who comes in, whether they're a member of our Fox River family or not quite yet, that they would see Jesus' love and be able to say, man, I experienced him this weekend at Fox River. And whenever we do that, blessing is on the way. Happiness is on the way. One of the ways we can make a huge difference in our church is through serving. Now, many of us are serving already. Many of us are not. I want to encourage you. This is one way that you could follow Jesus' example in a really practical way. Scan that QR code, scroll down just a little bit, and hit that serve button. Check out the different teams that you could join or be a part of. Where, ask yourself this question, where could I serve once or twice a month to show the love of Jesus in that way and make a difference in people's lives? Maybe it's part of the kids or the students' teams, all right? I mean, they're, they're like, they got this awesome goal, and I think it's totally attainable, right, to, to, to have 100 people sign up and join that team. Wow, what a difference that would make in the next generation. What a difference that would make as parents drop off their kids in a place that's just vibrant and full of energy and full of the love of Jesus. If you choose to do that, 
Listen, you, you don't have to listen to me. It, Jesus said it. You will be blessed. Because loving and serving and forgiving, that's what a heart for people and a message of Jesus looks like. Let's go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for loving and serving and forgiving us. We thank you for setting an example for us that we could and that we would choose to follow you. Give us a recognition, God. Give us an appreciation for all that you've done, for how much you love us. Give us a determination, God. Help us to be dedicated as we choose to follow your example and stop at nothing to do that. God, help us to be Christ-like in our homes. Help us to be Christ-like in our neighborhoods. Help us to show the love of Jesus even here at church at Fox River. As I'm praying here, and, and even just honestly for the last couple minutes, just keep thinking about that, that line that we said of how forgiven people forgive people and give people life. And I just keep thinking about how like maybe some of, some of us... Um, we don't know what that's like because we haven't been forgiven yet. Maybe, maybe some of us have been thinking about the gospel. Maybe some of us even believe the gospel. We've never actually reached out and trusted in Jesus and received him. I think it's really important. I think God would lead us to do exactly this, to give everyone an opportunity to receive him. So that's what we're gonna do now. If you're ready to receive Jesus, we've been talking all about how good he is if you want to step into more of his goodness and his grace and receive Jesus this weekend, let's, let's pray this prayer together now. I'm sorry, Lord, for sinning against you. I need your forgiveness and I need your grace. I believe, Lord, that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe, Lord, that three days later, you rose for my life. I'm trusting in you, Lord, and in you alone. I'm not trusting in myself or anything else anymore. I'm trusting in you, Lord, to save me and to make me new. I receive you, Jesus, right here, right now. Thank you. Help me to live my life for you. With eyes still closed, heads still bowed, if you receive Jesus this weekend at Fox River, would you just raise your hand right now? Just let me know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified, Lord, this week, not only in these minutes, but in this week as we choose to follow your example, God, and take up the towel of love. God, as we love and as we serve and as we forgive others, as we go, be glorified, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.